Hello, Falcons. I am here to read Chapter 4 of Night of the Howling Hound, written by si Sam Hay, illustrated by Simon Cooper, and published by Grosset and Dunlap. So, when we left Joe, he was just having the time of his life um, doing their Up in the Treetop exercises where they had to climb the wall and then they would they had to do the wire walk between the trees and they had to do the zip lining and of course Dexter Mr. Hill's zombie dog was following him everywhere and Joe finally agreed to help him and Dexter wants Joe to let Mr. Hill know in some way that it was not his fault that Dexter died so that Dexter could move on and uh, Joe was like, I don't know why you think that Mr. Hill's going to listen to anything I have to say. And then Dexter got distracted by a rabbit and bounded off. So chapter four. I hate egg salad, groaned Ava as she unwrapped her roll. I wanted ham. And I hate cheese, added Bethany, who was staring at her lunch as though it were a specimen in a jar. They were all back at camp now, eating lunch around the log circle before the treasure hunt. Joe could see Dexter running around the other side of the camp, chewing on twigs and sniffing for squirrels. As he got up to put his garbage in the trash can, Joe could hear Mr. Hill chatting to Lizzie. My dog Dexter would have loved it here. There's so much space to run around, he sighed. Mind you, I'd have spent all day trying to get him back on his leash afterward. Mr. Hill! I lost my water bottle, wailed Leone. I think I left it in the woods. Moni Leone, Joe thought. Maybe Mr. Hill was funnier than he looked. Just then, Dexter came hurtling out of the trees and shook himself, splattering Joe with mud. So, when are you going to speak to Brian? Joe made a face. I don't know. I haven't worked out what to say to him. The dog sat down at Joe's feet and gave a long, melancholy howl. Don't start that again muttered Joe, but Dexter continued howling. Joe stuck his fingers in his ears and looked over his shoulder to make sure no one was watching him. Look, he said, I'd really like to help you, but I can't just go and tell Mr. Hill it's not his fault you died. How do you think I'm going to explain that I know about you falling off that cliff? Dexter kept howling louder and louder. If only there was some way of showing Mr. Hill that it's not his fault. If he could see that not all dogs are like you, Dexter, that some dogs do respond to commands and do what they're told instead of just taking off whenever they want, Joe said. Dexter stopped howling and cocked his head to one side. Then maybe he'd realize that it wasn't his fault you got yourself killed. After all, he tried everything to keep you safe, didn't he? Just then Lizzie called, Tunnel treasure hunt time! Follow me! Joe stood up. Look, I've got to go, but I'll try to think of something, okay? But Dexter wasn't listening anymore. He'd spotted something more interesting in the trees, and he took off like a rocket. Everyone gather around, called Lizzie. They were on the other side of the camp now, near the start of the tunnel trail. Joe peered over at the tunnels. There were five of them dug into the side of a grassy bank. It's a bit like an underground maze, said Lizzie. You'll need to crawl down each tunnel and look for the nine letters of the alphabet that we've hidden inside. Write the letters on your sheets, and when you've found all of them, rearrange the letters into a word. Who I love anagrams, breathed Abby. Joe nudged Matt. What's an anagram? Sounds like some sort of weird shape we should learn about in math, he grimaced. Math was not his best class. Listen now, said Lizzie. When you've solved the word puzzle, use the map we've given you to come and find me in the forest. The first pair to reach me with the correct word is the winner. Want to team up? asked Matt. Joe nodded. Definitely. Everyone else was getting into pairs too. Ben and Thomas, the twins, Ava and Molly, and Spiker and Harry, who weren't normally allowed to work together because they messed around too much. Miss Bruce didn't seem to have noticed today. Not sure I'll fit in there, said Nick the Stick, bending down to peer into one of the tunnels. Well, I can, so you can too, grinned Finn, puffing out his chest so he looked even more enor enormous. But if you get stuck, I'll haul you out, okay? Don't forget your boots, said Lizzie. It's damp and muddy in there, and you'll need helmets too. What if we bump into each other, said Bethany. 
Only two pairs are allowed in each tunnel at a time, said Finn, and all the tunnels lead through to the other side of the bank, so you don't need to come back out the way you go in. Everyone ready? called Lizzie. Then get going. Joe and Matt raced, raced for the largest tunnel, beating Spiker and Harry, but only just. Watch it, growled Matt as Spiker and Harry tried to push them out of the way. Watch it yourself, Harry said with a smirk. Here's a picture of the tunnels. Give them a minute to get inside, said Finn, holding Spiker and Harry back. Then you can follow, but keep your distance. The tunnel was only a few feet wide and it had a damp, musty smell. They crawled through, ducking their heads under the low ceiling of the tunnel. After they'd gone a few yards inside, the only light was from their flashlights and it was hard to tell where they were going or where they'd been. There were a few dead ends and false turns. Hey, shouted Matt as Spiker and Harry barged past them. But Joe didn't really care. He was thinking about Uncle Charlie's adventure in an underground pyramid. Joe could imagine how Uncle Charlie must have felt inching his way through the gloom. He shone his flashlight ahead, half expecting to find a pile of bones. Got it, Joe shouted as he spotted the first letter fixed to the side of the tunnel. It was a W. Here they are inside the tunnel, finding the W. More letters followed soon after. Come on, Joe called to Matt as he crawled into another tunnel. We've only got two more to find. Wait, what was that scratching noise? Matt grinned. Rats? Hope not, Joe grimaced. But just then something big and wet loomed out of the darkness, and it definitely wasn't a rat. Ooh, Joe groaned as Dexter licked his face, smothering him in sticky ghoul drool. Cut out, I'm not an ice cream cone. I found something, Dexter panted. In the forest, come and see. What was that about ice cream? Called Matt, who was a bit farther back. Mm, nothing. Joe turned to Dexter and silently mouthed, Wait outside. Dexter shot back down the tunnel, his muddy tail splattering Joe in the face. Five minutes later, the boys scrambled out the exit, blinking in the daylight. Come on, shouted Matt. We can rearrange the letters on the way. He broke into a run, heading for the trees. Joe looked around for Dexter just as the dog crashed out of the bush bushes and hurtled past them. Luckily, he seemed to be heading the same way. Hey, Joe, barked Dexter. Guess what I found in the woods? Joe shrugged. It was impossible to talk with Matt just a few feet in front of them. A well-behaved dog, woofed Dexter, just like you said. One that does what it's told. You've got to see it this way, he veered left. Joe slowed to a jog, then a walk. Dexter wanted them to go a different way to where the map was taking them. Come on, it's not far, Dexter barked impatiently. Joe hesitated for a second, then stuffed the map in his pocket. Uh, I think it's down here, Matt, he said, heading left. Are you sure? Definitely, come on. It was a narrow path with several sawed-off tree stumps along the way. The ground was much more overgrown than the trail they'd been following before. After a few minutes, Matt stopped. Are you sure this is the right way? I haven't seen anyone else. Maybe we should check the map again. As Joe handed the map over to Matt, he could hear the sound of barking close by. And this time, it wasn't Dexter. All right, that's the end of chapter four. I will return with chapter five on Monday. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Until the next time.